As mentioned briefly in an earlier video, we want to talk about expected value for gambling. And there are two very important concepts here, which I've highlighted both of them. One is that a game is fair if its expected value for the profit for the player or the house for that matter is zero. That's called a fair game or a zero sum game. So if you've heard of a zero sum game, sum because of course the weighted mean, the expected value has a sum inside that formula. And then the house edge, usually written as a percent, but not always, um, is the expected value of profit for the house, for the person that's running the game. All right, so let's see how this works in an example to try to clarify things for ourselves. So we have a charity holding a raffle, and that raffle sells 1,000 tickets for $2 each. One of the tickets will be selected to win a grand prize of $1,000. Two other tickets will be selected to win consolation prizes of $50 each. We're going to construct a probability distribution for the player's profits. So we're going to take this from the player's perspective. All right, well, let's see. Let's remind ourselves that profit is revenue minus cost, right? Now, when you play this game, you can either win the big money, you can win the small money, or you can lose, right? Those are the three options for this game. I could have just done 50-50 raffle, but that was kind of boring, <laughs> so I made this kind of jazzier. So one person wins a big prize of 1,000, two people win 500, and everybody else loses. All right, so let's think about the profit if you lose. You bought the tickets for $2 each, right? Right here. So that was the pay to play. That's your cost. So if you win nothing, your profit is negative $2. Now, if you win big, you might think, oh, I won $1,000. Ah, but profit is revenue minus cost. It's winnings minus your ante in um gambling circles. So it's your winnings, the amount that you win, minus your ante is what it's called. It's what you pay before you're allowed to play. A-N-T-E, it's Latin. Right. Sorry, A-N-T-E, right? So in gambling. Okay, so what would that mean? That would mean that instead of a thousand here, I'm going to have 998. The reason is that would be a thousand take away two. Or if we win the small money, that would be $50 take away two, which is $48, which goes right here. Like that. Now, usually you don't have to calculate this. In uh, most casino games, they'll actually tell you what it is right off the bat. So they'll say, you know, five colon one, which will get you five and negative one. But this one was a little bit different just to do something with some variety. Okay, now there were a thousand tickets sold. Only one of those 1,000 tickets will be a winner. So there's a 0 0.001 probability. That's one in the thousandths place, see? And then there were two tickets out of 1,000 that were the small prize. So that's 0 0.002. And then that means there's 997 loser tickets, right? Because there's three winnings, three winning tickets. And so there's 0.997 probability of losing. All right, so now let's go find those magic words, expected value of profit, right? So the expected value for you. So, and that's the way we set up the table. We set up the table as a player would. Okay, so we're gonna go find the expected value. I mean, simple as that. So we could multiply with a calculator if we wanna do this by hand. We could take 998 times 0.001 plus 48 times 0.002 and then minus, because it's negative, 2 times 0.997. There we have it. Um, and then I'm going to show a stat crunch. Well, if we did stat edit, I'll just clear these out for fun. So 998, 48. Remember on the calculator, you have to use a little negative button down here at the bottom. So negative 2, enter. And then we can make this 0 0.001, 0 0.002, 0 0.997. Stat, calculate one variable. Make sure your frequency list is L2. And there you have it, negative 0.9, which was the same thing we did when we had the, um, oop, hold on, there it is, negative 0.9, same thing when we got it by hand. 
And one last time, let's show how to do it in StatCrunch. So it's going to be the stat calculator that we're using here. So we'll go down here to profit, probability of profit. I'm just trying to name these different things so it makes it easier for me to find. So this is 998, this is 48, and this is negative 2. This is 0 .001, 0 .002, and 0 .997. So when I go to stat, Calculators custom. My values are on the very last profit, and my weights are in that very last probability because they go in order. That that table menu, by the way, that menu matches the columns from left to right. Just so you know. And I click compute, and there it is, negative 0.9. Same value that the calculator found. So whichever way you want to find it, you'll get negative 0.9. So that's the mean of the profit for the player, which is the way we set up the table. Because of course we want to put ourselves in the um, shoes of the gambler. So it's negative 0.9 and of course it would be dollars because this is money. Right? So it's a dollar sign. Now describe what that means in practical terms. Well, it means that each person that buys a ticket or each ticket sold is expected um, to lose 90 cents for the player, right? So lose and lose because it's negative. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, you can't lose 90 cents. Right, exactly. One single person can't. This is how it averages out, right, for all the players. Let me, I'll let you see in just a second. I think maybe the bottom one will make more sense. All right, so it's it's not really about any one ticket, even though we say it that way. It's how it averages out. So if you buy 25 tickets, so let's say you bought 25 tickets, what's your expected profit now? Well, you might be thinking, oh, I've got to go remake the table. No, you don't. This was for each ticket, right? For each ticket sold, you expected to lose 90 cents. So if you buy 25 tickets, you just take 25 and multiply it by negative 0.90, and you will have... Uh, let's see here. Let me grab a calculator. 25 times negative 0.9 is negative 2250. Put a dollar sign next to it, of course. And there you have it. That's all. Because when you figure out the profit for one ticket, you're kind of figuring out the profit for as many times as you want to play. Right? If you bought 80 tickets, you'd multiply 80 times your expected value. So what you're doing is 25 times your expected value of profit. Simple as that. Now, the house edge. Okay, so if you look back up here at the profit for the player, you're losing 90 cents for each ticket that you buy. So who are you losing it to? Ah, you're losing it to the house, right? So the house edge is the mean of the profit for the house. A house being the person running the game or the casino. That would be positive 0 0.90. And they usually write it as a percent. So they usually write it as 90%. But either one of those is okay. So if you want to write it as 0 0.90 or you want to write it as 90%, that's fine. Right? Because they expect to make 90% off of every ticket they sold. Now, let me put these two things in perspective for you just to kind of help. Hopefully it'll make sense. There are a thousand tickets sold altogether, right? If there are a thousand tickets sold at two dollars each, that would mean two thousand dollars in revenue for the charity. Right? And then they gave away, they give away, uh, let's see, a thousand and fifty and fifty, right? So they give away eleven $1 hundred dollars which means there's $900 total going to the charity. And if you take $900 total and you divide it amongst the 1,000 tickets, you're at 90 cents, right? That's what that means. So there's $90 total going to the charity, right? So that's what the 90 cents means. Every player expects to lose 90 cents. 1,000 tickets were sold, so that means that there's 900, so another way to put it is 0.90 times 
times a thousand means $900 take home for the charity or the house in this case. It's not that any one ticket loses 90 cents. It's that it averages out that way for the thousand tickets overall. And so if you take the 90 cents and you multiply by the thousand tickets sold, that gives you $900 take home of which this person that bought 25 is just taking a bigger hit of it, right? But they have a chance of winning the big money. So that's why they do it. Now, is this a fair game? Well, for that, we have to go back to the definition of fair game at the top. A fair game is a game that has an expected value of zero. Sorry, that kind of came off on the other one. So a fair game, let me write it right here, is the expected value for the profit is zero. That's a fair game. And so this is not a fair game, right? No. And it's because the mean of the profit, the expected value for your profit, for the house, it's positive, or for the um, player, it's negative, right? So it's negative 0.9 for the player. It's positive 0.9 for the house, but either way, in this case, the house is a charity, but either way, it's not zero. And that's what makes it not a fair game. Fair games have an expected value of zero, which of course a charity wouldn't do that because the charity is trying to earn money for the charity. So they would never run a gambling game that has a expected value of zero. The trick is at a casino to get as close to an expected value of zero as you can, to get the lowest house edge you can. Um, and usually that takes place at blackjack, if you know what you're doing at blackjack, in case you're interested. <laughs> but I highly recommend knowing what you're doing. Never show up at a casino trying to learn at the table how to play the game because that will be a very expensive lesson for you. <laughs> right. Of course, me personally, I don't bother to play at all. I'd rather keep my money and invest it in other things.